So I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Philip Lamsons, and I am the board chair of the Multicultural Alliance. Um, on behalf of our board of directors, uh, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us here tonight. And, and more importantly, we want to thank everybody for your support of our mission and our programs. So if you don't know, MCA is a small nonprofit with a small staff, a medium-sized board, and a very modest budget. Um, each year, we offer a lot of community activities to promote our missions. Uh, you can find a lot of these in your uh, in the... I can't talk. This is terrible. Bad time to lose your voice or not be able to speak. So we got a program. Everybody, if you can't find yours, stand up. You're probably sitting on it. So hold, keep this close to yourself because we're going to go over this a few times. I'm going to remind you about it a few times. Um, but take a look at the program. It goes over a bunch of our different um, programs that we've got. Your program on your programs. I mean, that's, that's great. i got to come up with a different name next time. Um, but it really talks about our mission, which is to pr promote diversity um, and understanding. And, so we, and we want you to look at it in the hopes that you can come and join us and join in our programming. I myself, um, I've personally seen the impact the MCA programs can have on my family as well as myself. Um, one of our programs is Camp Community, and back in 1991, when I was a junior in high school, um, I went to Camp Anytown, which is what Camp Community was known as back then. Uh, last year, my mother, who's over here in the corner, who's probably mortified that I'm singling her out in front of a room full of people, um, uh, did the uh, table to, or the interfaith dialogues last year. Um, and two of my sons is, I have actually attended Camp Community. Um, three years ago, my oldest son, Carter, went, uh, and he loved it. He loved it so much that when he got home, I asked him, I said, do you think your younger brother, Blake, should go? And his, his immediate was, response was just, was depth, definitely, absolutely, he needs to go. You know, if you live in a house like mine, my first thought is, is, is he throwing his brother under the bus? Does he feel like Blake needs to feel his pain? So I thought about it for a minute and kind of delved into a little bit more. And actually, he turned out, he said it was great. He really thought that his brother needed to go, and, and he would have really missed out on a great opportunity. So last year, Blake did go. Um, and I, I went and picked him up from the bus. And of course, I was a few minutes late, and he was one of the last kids to get picked up. So he got to say goodbye to everybody. And it was, it was actually pretty good for him. And as we were driving back, I, I, I turned and I looked at him and I said, Blake, so how was it? And he just turns and looks at me and he says, honestly, I'm kind of tired of sharing. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him a minute, you know, as I anxiously sat through the next few minutes in the car because I'm itching, I want to know how it went. And then I said, okay, well, now you got to tell me, how was it? And he just looks and, and then he couldn't stop talking. For the whole 20 minute ride home, he kept telling me about everything, all the new friends he made, all the experiences that he had, everything that he learned. And I couldn't get him to stop. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I mean, it's kind of one of those, be careful what you ask for, and you just might get it sort of situations. And eventually, my youngest son, Ryan, will go. Uh, Ryan's not old enough to go to camp yet, and he doesn't even know that he's going to camp yet. But <laughs> eventually, he'll get volunteered for it. But speaking of some of our programs, I want to run through and give you a quick synopsis, um, a little list of our different programs and what we've done during the past year. So one of our programs is Table Talk, and we've offered it in two different formats. Uh, one is hosted in a home, and the second is called Table Talk Events. And what it does is it brings a group of people together for simultaneous table talks in one large room. So rather than having just one group of about 10 or 12 people, you have multiple groups of 10 or 12 people in the same room. Uh, let's see. Content-wise, we offer three types of table talks. Uh, one is with just general information about storytelling. Another is with face-based questions. And the third is race-based questions. And this year, we actually did something a little bit different. We trained moderators in Southlake. And actually, the, just this past Thursday, um, they did a race-based table talk event for a group of 50 community members, which is one of the largest ones that we've had. Uh, last month, we coordinated a face-based faith-based table talk event for high school students representing Reform Judaism, Islam, and the Church of Latter-day Saints. At this event, we had over 100 students gathered in the Islamic Association of Mid-Cities to talk about life experiences and have an opportunity to build relationships and friendships. 
Uh, later tonight, Kim Cummings is going to come up, and she's going to speak a little bit about Table Talk. Um, our Interfaith Dialogue program continues to grow. We coordinated sessions in Fort Worth and in Northeast Tarrant County. Uh, something we added this past fall is a partnership with Tarrant County College, where we facilitate interfaith dialogues for their staff and faculty. And actually, again, last Friday, it's been a busy week, uh, we just started another session of interfaith dialogues with the Tarrant County College. We have a retreat for seminary students, which has our farthest geographic reach. Um, we brought in together rabbinical students from California, Christian seminary students from all over the state, and Muslim seminary students from Kulum Institute in Arlington. Uh, we also continue to host, host the People's Art Collaborative. Uh, we partnered with local events, libraries, the TC, TCU, UNICEF, MHMR, and Windows to the World. One of our topics was realities of race, racism, and race relations. Another one focused on forced migration. Camp Community, the camp I was talking about earlier, continues to educate high school students to be responsible leaders in a diverse community, while at the same time creating an environment for students to be themselves, to be heard, and to have fun. Because like you know, with any high school student, it's got to be about fun. So later on tonight, we're going to hear from Caroline Lampson's a little bit, and she's going to talk about uh, her experiences at Camp Community.